Hi, and welcome to the section of the Physics 2 Tutor, and in this section we're going to cover the very important topic of entropy. Okay, entropy is one of those words that until you study physics you probably haven't heard about it too much, but boy, once you start studying physics you'll read about entropy almost everywhere. It's one of those things that uh, it just permeates physics and, and it's hard to really nail down exactly what it means until you take the time to study uh, this topic here. Basically, in a nutshell, entropy is a, uh, a quantity that we're introducing here that's basically going to measure the disorder of a system. Okay, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I want you to know that it, in the end of the day, that's all it is. So we're going to go through a lot of stuff from here to the end of this section right here. But at the end of the day, when we calculate entropy change, we're measuring the change in the disorder of a system. And what do I mean by that? It's just exactly what I'm saying. If I go to my bed and I put my socks on the bed and I lay them out in a nice orderly rectangular uh, arrangement with grids and rows and columns, it would, it would be said to have a, a, a lower entropy state. It's, it's less disordered. It's, pretty, it's a pretty orderly state, right? Now if I go and send my two-year-old in there to mix up the socks and throw them up and they go everywhere and they land different directions and everything else, that would be said to have a higher entropy state. It's more disordered, more disorganized. Okay, that's basically what entropy is. And so everything from that word right here till the end of the section is all going to be talking about how we can calculate that and what it really means, okay? Now let's do a little bit of a review really quickly. Recall that we talked about state variables. And I didn't emphasize it too much because it's a fancy word, state variables. What does that mean? Well, state variables are just those that, and the reason they're called that is because they literally do uh, tell you the state of the system. So things like the pressure, uh, the volume, the temperature uh, of, of whatever your cylinder or your, or your system, whatever, these are state variables. The reason they're called state variables is because PV is equal to NRT. That's the equation that we always learned even in high school chemistry and physics for the ideal gas law. That's really called an equation of state. And so these are intrinsic, uh, these are intrinsic variables that represent the, basically the, uh, the kinetic or the quantum mechanical state of that system. They're the variables at the outside that we can measure that are basically measuring the, um, the uh, atomic uh, characteristics of the gas going on here. In contrast to that, Things like the heat going in to the system and the work done by the system or the work the system does in the surroundings, those are not state variables. These are not state variables. Okay, they're not state variables. Uh, they're very important. It's very important to know how much heat goes in or out of something. It's very important to know how much work is done. But neither one of these things represents the intrinsic state of the gas there. And that's what pressure, volume, and temperature are. Okay, so these are describing the energy take going into and out of the system. Very important. These are describing the system itself. That's really the difference. That's what a state variable is. Well, what we have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is a new state variable that I haven't talked about yet. Okay, so you have pressure, volume, temperature. A new state variable is, you guessed it, S. Uh, I don't even know actually why they call it S, but that's the abbreviation we always use for entropy. I suppose if you used E for entropy, you would get confused because you would think it means energy, and it doesn't mean energy. This has nothing to do with energy. This has to do with random uh, disorganization. Higher the uh, entropy, the more disorganized. Let me give you an example. If you have a high value of this, this new state variable called S for entropy, um, for instance, steam might have a high... Um, entropy value because it's more uh, disorganized or it has more disorder. In contrast that with something that might have lower entropy like for instance ice and that would have less disorder. And you can kind of think about that. You're gonna have to, in, the, in this section you're gonna have equations and all but you're gonna really have to uh, visualize what's happening in a lot of these cases to understand if the answers make sense. Basically, ice is a frozen form of water, right? So it's, it's, it's rigidly locked into a lattice. The, the molecular bonds are stronger because things are closer together and they've settled into this nice rectangular lattice. Everything's evenly spaced. And that's what gives ice its rigid uh, and, and nature. I mean, when you think about it, it's hard to crush ice, whereas water is completely different. It's, it flows in your hand and it moves all around you. There's really no... Um, there's no uh, way you can 